Hey, welcome back. Today's video is the fifth episode of I Bought This Thing. At least I think it's the fifth episode. I can't count, so if it's the sixth, forgive me. For this episode, I want to start with a simple question. The question is this, can you buy points in competitive shooting? Leave me an answer below in the comments because I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on this. When you're done, come back and finish the video. All right, with that out of the way, let's talk about my opinion on this, and this is just my opinion. My opinion is, yes, you can buy points, but it's subject to diminishing returns. In other words, I can buy quite a few points at the bottom of the um, well, so to speak, but not so many toward the top. For instance, when I'm picking a bullet, I can pick blemished seconds bullets. They're very cheap and shoot them. I'll shoot a score, okay, without a whole lot of trauma. But at the same time, that lack of precision that I'm going to get from that situation is going to negatively impact my score. Take a bit of money and purchase really good bullets. And your score is going to rise. It's almost inevitable. And that is one way that we can purchase points. Very simply and effectively. On the other hand, we can't necessarily purchase enough points to beat the guys that are already at that level equipment-wise. So we have to be very careful about when we decide to purchase points. Are we purchasing points to try to exceed what the other shooters are getting or to catch up with them? Now, in my case, this particular item that we're talking about today is something that I purchased to try to catch up with the higher level shooters a little bit because I have a skills deficit. You see, the path from where I am to being a top level shooter has this big roadblock in it, and that is my skills deficits. Now, those skills deficits can be physical skills from lack of training, lack of practice, lack of understanding the game, and some of them can be inherent to me. And this particular item fixes one of the things that's inherent to me. And that inherent problem that I've identified from literal hours of filming myself shooting PRS matches over the last 18 months is lack of temporal awareness. I do not know where I am in clock time as I'm shooting. Sometimes I rush when there's no need to. Sometimes I go so slow that I time out with only seven out of 10 shots off with seven solid hits. Either way, I didn't take full advantage of what was available to me because ultimately you want to get all of your shots off in the total amount of time available without rushing any of them so you get the maximum number of hits. Well, I'm not doing that well. And every attempt I've made to improve my outcomes has, well, been somewhat underwhelming. I have sped up and created more efficiency in my shooting, so I'm getting more shots off naturally because I'm moving faster from position to position. I'm building positions quicker and more accurately. All of those things are getting done. I have a lot more work to do there. But sometimes it's a matter of the plan isn't working. And many top level shooters talk about, I started shooting a stage and I was doing this and it wasn't working, so I switched to that and finished the stage and cleaned it. I need to have that awareness, that situational awareness in order to get better in my shooting. Because situational awareness, especially of time in PRS, is critical. And I'm just not getting there. I think, just based on my own internal clock, that I have two things going on at once. I'm thinking, you know, conscious thought. I need to do this next. I need to go there. I need to move. I'm going to have to pick up the bag this way. Those things. And then there's the subconscious skills of shooting. And the two are not running on the same clock speed, if you will. In other words, once I get into the scope and I am finishing up the hold and breaking the shot, I am not aware of time anymore. I'm aware of time when I'm moving, but not when I'm actually shooting. And that subconscious conscious switch that keeps going on back and forth, back and forth during PRS shooting is a matter of training. I mean, there's absolutely an opportunity to train this out. But that's going to be a very long process, which I might be able to short circuit with a little bit of technology. If you haven't already identified the piece of technology we we're talking about, we are talking about the MDT Crush It timer. The MDT timer was kind of an offshoot of one that 5x5 Precision created. Chad Heckler created this a long time ago, simply mounting a timer to the rifle in order to understand where you were in your timeline. A lot of shooters have the same problem I do lack of temporal awareness. The MDT Crush It timer is the newest iteration of a way to solve this problem. Now remember, being an I bought this thing video, I purchased this item at full retail with my own money, including the adapter mounter plate that I purchased separately to allow me to mount it to my rifle in the way that I wanted to. So what does the Crush It timer really do? 
Well, it's a countdown timer, and that's the primary function of it. It has a single button knob on it, so everything is done by either twisting the knob or pushing the button in. And it's a very, very simple design with a lot of menus in it, a lot of functionality there. But from the box, it is set for two minutes. You can just punch the button and it starts timing. The first concern I had about this product when I first went to purchase it was how easy is it to accidentally turn off? You can allay that concern because in order to turn the timer off, you are going to have to hold the button in for three to five seconds. It takes quite some time and all that does is reset the timer. If on the other hand, you let it run out of time, it is set to automatically shut down after it counts down to the end of the time and turn itself off to save battery. Brilliant design in my opinion. MDT provides an extensive set of instructions with the unit when you get it, which is going to allow you to program it to do any custom thing you want. So for me, pro programming my timer is pretty simple. Now remember the times for the alerts when you're programming custom alerts is time from the end of time. So it's how far from the end. In other words, if you set a minute and 30 seconds, it's going to go off with 90 seconds remaining. One minute is one minute remaining. Remember that when you're programming it because I got it backward the first time I tried it. Maybe I didn't read the instructions quite so thoroughly. And for me, the ability to set the tone frequency and the tone length is helpful because I have set the tones in a way that I get long tones at the beginning and the tones shorten over time as it tells me that I'm counting down on time. The whole idea is if I hear very quick beeps, I know I'm getting toward the end. If I hear slow beeps, I'm near the beginning. So I can maintain awareness even if I'm not looking at it, even if I'm not intimately aware of what's going on around me. If I'm stuck in the zone in that subconscious mind, I still hear it. Now, the one thing that you are going to have to train out is not to stop to listen to the tones. That's why I set the tones differently so that I won't have to. In other words, I have a little more training to do, but I've only had this for a few days. Ultimately, what you're looking for is that temporal awareness. Should I speed up? Can I slow down? That's all you really need to know in a PRS match. And at the same time, if you're getting done early, you're fine as long as you're breaking good shots. So this tool may be something that stays on my rifle forever or may serve as a training tool like the red dot did that now I could take it off and still shoot just as well without it. Although I did leave it on the rifle because you can't ever have too many gadgets hanging off your rifle. So if you're like me and find yourself Having someone call time on a stage when you thought it was only 40 seconds instead of two minutes and you're wondering if they set the clock right, or worse yet, you get done and they say, gee, that was fast. You got a minute and 10 seconds remaining. Perhaps the crush it timer would be a good choice for you in order to make sure that you take advantage of the time available to you to break those best quality shots to get the most points possible out of your shooting and to avoid running out of time and losing points because you never fired the shot. Back to the original prediction. Can you buy points with this Crush It timer? I believe so. We're going to find out at the next match. Ultimately, I think we're looking at buying somewhere between five and six points a match for me because I time out on a lot of stages. If I can stop timing out because I get more efficient in my shooting and I have better awareness so I don't spend time futzing with things that don't need to be futzed with, perhaps. I can do better and get more points and find myself higher up the standings at the finish in order to improve my outcomes over time. Who knows? I might pick up a bunch of points all of a sudden and they just never go away. If that's the case, it was a pretty good purchase because for only $300, including tax and shipping for the Crush It Timer plus the mount that I wanted to mount it on the M-Lock rail, that's a pretty cheap set of points. All right, guys, until next time, shoot straight. Think about how technology can address your weaknesses, and I'll see you in the next video.